Hi there, good morning and welcome to another edition of Tobin Talks. I'm at my desk, as you can see, been home now in quarantine for about two months and um, things in the real estate industry are slowing for sure, but still moving. Um, today we're going to talk about the role of an IRA, specifically a self-directed IRA, and the role and impact it can have on real estate. Today I'm, well, I'm pleased to have bring in the first guest for Tobin Talks ever, um, Adam Bergman. I'm going to admit him now into our Zoom. Adam, are you there? Adam? Let's wait a second. Adam Bergman is a um, tax attorney. Um, he started his own company, IRA Financial, years ago. I've worked with him for a number of clients to him. I, um, have um, used him myself, and um, once we see that Adam is in, Adam, are you there? I'm here. You see me? You hear me? Let's see you, but I can see your name and we can hear you. Do you want to come aboard? And uh, there we go. Welcome. Yeah. So, uh, welcome and thank you for being Tobin Talk's first guest uh, yet. So, tell us a little bit about a self directed IRA, if you would. Okay, well, it's, it's interesting because you would think more people would have heard of a self-directed IRA because a self-directed IRA is really just a regular IRA. It was created in 1973 with the creation of ERISA, just like any other IRA that you know about. 50 million IRAs in the United States, 95 to 97% are opened with banks and financial institutions and invest in traditional assets like stocks and mutual funds. However, about three to 5% of IRAs are actually invested in alternative assets like real estate. And that is the idea of a self-directed IRA. It's really the same thing of an IRA. The only difference is that the custodian, the, the bank or trust company that you open your IRA with will give you the ability to invest in alternative assets. Okay. So, so I recall probably about 10 or 15 years ago being exposed to um, self-directed IRAs as real vehicles to hold um, real property. So basically what you're saying is that a self-directed IRA can hold title to real property. It can lease real property. It can mortgage real property. It can lend against real property, right? Right. So there's only three things you can't do, and that's in the Internal Revenue Code section 408 and 4975. And in sum, it's basically the following. Can't buy life insurance, can't buy collectibles like art. And the third and broadest category found in Internal Revenue Code section 4975 is you cannot do any transaction with your IRA that in any way, directly or indirectly, personally involves or benefits you or your lineal descendants, your parents, children, spouse, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, or any entities you control. Okay. So otherwise, you can do it, whether it's commercial real estate, residential real estate, tax liens, tax deeds, hard money loans, crypto, gold. As long as it's not those three things, you can do it. And, and, really, and, and really, in the last 10, 15 years, it's broadened the real estate market so much because it's, it's brought this huge asset um, huge, huge amount of assets that previously had been, you know, thought locked up. And now you brought so much more capital to the markets, to the real yep. estate market specifically. Yep. That's a great point. I mean, there's approximately $10 trillion in IRAs. And think about that. If 5% are an alternative assets, it's a lot of cash. And most of the investors using retirement money or buying real estate are paying cash for the assets. So yes, over the last 10 years, I agree, since the 08-09 crisis, there's been a huge movement of diversification and using retirement money to invest in assets people trust, know, and, and hard assets. Okay. Now, I know in the title world, um, you know, that, that's my world, I know we're, we're fine insuring uh, both mortgages and real property in the name of um, your self-directed IRA. Talk to us a bit about a bank and how the banks react and what they require if they're going to lend to uh, 
self-directed um, borrowers or against property that's owned by self-directed IRAs? Yeah, it's a great question. So essentially under 4975, that prohibited transaction provision in the code, there's a few things to note when it comes to borrowing or leverage. Number one, the loan has to be non-recourse, meaning you cannot personally guarantee the loan of your IRA. Why? Because it's in 4975C, it would trigger a prohibited transaction. So if a bank is going to borrow, if you're gonna borrow money using your IRA from a bank or a financial institution or a friend, number one, the friend cannot be a related person. Number two, it has to be a non-recourse loan, which is a loan you do not personally guarantee. And then three, there's something called unrelated business taxable income or UBTI, which is the potential tax imposed on the leverage used by the IRA to purchase real estate. So probably best used for cash buyers who are going to title their property in their IRA more so exactly. than that. Maybe exactly. Part, yeah. Well, although there's an exception for 401ks. If you have a solo 401k because you have your own business, there's a provision under 514c9 that will allow a 401k to use a non-recourse loan to acquire real estate and not pay this UBTI tax. So that's you know, one kind of bonus for being self-employed and being able to get into a solo 401k and use leverage. Okay. Definitely uh, from my firm, it's been a great thing um, using, um, you know, we started our uh, self-directed 401k 15 years ago, and I've been able to invest in property, lend, um, and so long as you stay within the rules, which are pretty broad, it's been a, it's been a great thing. So, uh, well, yeah. let, let, me, let me just um, finish up by asking you, if clients want to buy real property through their self-directed IRA, it's my understanding that they should form a new entity, an LLC, Florida LLC is fine to take title in. Is that what, what you'd recommend? Yeah, it's a great question. There's two options. Number one, you can have the custodian take title for you. So for example, IRA Financial Trust, custodian for the benefit of the Adam Bergman IRA. That's the easiest, um, probably least upfront cost because you don't have to form an LLC, but there's high, higher ongoing costs because the custodian's involved in every facet of the transaction from paying a contractor to paying taxes to depositing checks uh, versus a, a special purpose LLC that typically can be formed in Florida or if the real estate's located in Florida, the IRA owns 100% of the LLC. So from a tax standpoint, it's a tax nothing, it's a disregarded entity, but you still have potential limited liability protection. And then you as the manager of that LLC can write a check to the contractor or to pay taxes. And you have a little bit more control, plus lenders like to lend directly to an LLC and not the custodian. So um, yes, I think a lot of more sophisticated real estate investors uh, will form the LLC. Wow. That's great info, Adam. Thank you so much. And thanks so much for joining us. We're going to put your information up um, so people can get a hold of you if they have questions. And uh, on one last note, thanks for uh, the memo that this was the t-shirt edition of Tobin Talk. <laughs> so uh, it's great to see you, buddy. And, uh, and thank you so much. Uh, the quarantine uh, wardrobe. That's right. That's right. Thanks again, Adam. Be well. Be well, Mike. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.